John Green The Anthropocene Reviewed Essays on a Human-Centred Planet In the current era of the Anthropocene, humanity's influence permeates every aspect of the world, from the environment and climate to the most common aspects of daily life. This is a time characterised by both our remarkably creative and destructive impact on the planet and, in turn, how these global changes shape our experiences. In this blink, you'll explore a series of distinct and isolated topics, each offering a unique perspective on life in the Anthropocene through the eyes of author John Green. Each section serves as a dip into a different facet of this era, revealing the diverse and profound ways in which our world and our lives are interconnected in these unprecedented, often daunting times. Navigating the Vastness of Time Humanity's Place in the Universe Have you ever stood under a starlit sky and pondered our place in the vast universe? Anyone who has visited a planetarium may have been confronted with the startling revelation that in a billion years, the Earth's oceans will evaporate and eventually our planet will be consumed by the sun. This stark realisation of Earth's future devoid of human existence, may make you wonder about humanity's temporal range in the grand scheme of the cosmos. The universe is filled with red giants like Arcturus, stars that have engulfed their solar systems. It's a common astronomical event, yet it starkly symbolises the end of worlds, a concept both terrifying and fascinating. This idea resonates with humanity's fascination and fear of the apocalypse, a theme echoed throughout history with varying beliefs and predictions. In a survey across 20 countries, perceptions about the end of humanity ranged widely, reflecting cultural histories and personal anxieties. Focusing on apocalyptic predictions, we encounter figures like Harold Camping, who repeatedly forecasted the end times only to be proven wrong. These failed predictions underscore the human tendency to focus on our own mortality and the narcissistic notion that the world might end with us. Yet this fear is part of a broader awareness, as humans understand the finitude of species, including our own. Despite our relatively brief existence, humans have made a profound impact on the planet. Our temporal range a mere 250,000 years, pales in comparison to species like elephants and alpacas, yet our ecological footprint is significant. We've been responsible for the extinction of numerous species and have dramatically altered Earth's environment. As we confront our ecological impact and the challenges of the future, we can find hope in humanity's resilience and adaptability. Our history of overcoming obstacles, from exploring unknown lands to surviving harsh environments, showcases our enduring spirit. In the face of technological advancements and environmental challenges, our ability to adapt and innovate gives us hope for continued survival. Despite the daunting scale of cosmic events and our temporal finitude, humanity's persistence and ingenuity offer a glimmer of hope. We may be a fleeting chapter in Earth's history, but our capacity for change and adaptation could extend our story far beyond our current understanding. Echoes of the Past The Legacy of Lascaux Cave Paintings Imagine stumbling upon a window to the distant past, a vivid testament to human creativity that has endured for millennia. You can do so, via the Lascaux Cave Paintings, an extraordinary discovery made by a group of young friends in the French countryside during the time of World War II. Led by a curious dog named Robot, Marcel Ravida and his friends Georges Agnel, Jacques Marsal and Simon Cuencas unearthed a cave adorned with over 900 paintings, a hidden treasure of ancient art. The cave was a gallery of prehistoric life, depicting horses, stags, bison, and even extinct species like the woolly rhinoceros. 
Created using pulverized minerals, these paintings showcased an advanced understanding of art techniques, including the illusion of movement in flickering torchlight. Dated to be at least 17,000 years old, these artworks presented a profound connection to our Paleolithic ancestors. The discovery came at a time when the world was in chaos. For Simon Cuencas, a Jewish teenager hiding from the Nazi occupation, the cave was a brief respite from the harsh realities of the time. Tragically, while he survived the war, his parents did not. The two other discoverers, Ravida and Marsal, stayed to protect their find, later joining the French resistance and returning to the cave post-war to serve as its guardians and guides. The Lascaux Cave opened to the public in 1948, drawing significant attention, including from Pablo Picasso, who was struck by the originality of the art. However, the mysteries of Lascaux remained. Unanswered questions about the absence of certain animals in the paintings, the rare depictions of human forms, and the purpose behind the art. Despite its historical and cultural significance, the Lascaux Cave's exposure to the modern world led to its eventual closure. The influx of visitors resulted in environmental damage, prompting the creation of replica caves for public viewing. This act underlines a poignant truth about human nature, our desire to connect with and preserve the past. The Lascaux cave paintings, now closed to the public, continue to captivate and intrigue. They are a reminder of the enduring human spirit of creativity and exploration, a legacy passed down through generations. In a world where the past often feels distant and disconnected, Lascaux stands as a powerful symbol of our shared heritage. Adapting Wings The Canada Goose the Canada goose is a bird that's become as synonymous with suburban parks and golf courses as squirrels and pigeons. This brown-bodied, black-necked bird, notorious for its honking call, has seen an astounding population surge, now estimated to be between four to six million worldwide. Yet this wasn't always the case. In fact, it was once on the brink of extinction. But these birds have made a spectacular comeback a testament to both human impact and nature's resilience. The story of the Canada Goose's recovery is a curious tale of human intervention. In the early 20th century, unrestricted hunting had nearly wiped them out. Hunters used live decoys in the form of captured geese mutilated to be flightless. These geese would lure in their wild counterparts, resulting in a cruel practice so effective that it decimated goose populations. In 1935, however, the use of live decoys was banned, marking a turning point that allowed goose populations to begin their slow climb back. In 1962, ornithologists like Harold C. Hansen were stunned to discover the survival of the giant Canada goose previously believed extinct. Since then, the spread of this species has been nothing short of remarkable, with thriving populations now found from Scandinavia to Australia. The proliferation can be partly attributed to the transformation of landscapes by humans. Suburbs, parks and particularly golf courses offer ideal habitats for these geese, where they feast on Kentucky bluegrass, a common plant we've unwittingly cultivated for their benefit. The relationship between humans and Canada geese is complex. While they have thrived in our modified environments, they often seem to display a blatant disdain for humans, sometimes even attacking passers-by. This paradoxical coexistence is emblematic of the broader human-nature relationship in the Anthropocene. We've moulded the planet to such an extent that we now dictate the survival of entire species. That said, on an individual level... We often feel powerless against the whims of nature, or in this case, a flock of geese. The story of the Canada goose is a mirror to our own existence. It's a reminder of the unintended consequences of our actions on the environment and how nature, in its own way, adapts and thrives. The Canada goose, with its challenges and successes, is a fitting symbol of the Anthropocene, where nature and humans are inextricably intertwined. 
Digital Evolution Reflecting on the Early Internet There was a time when connecting with someone across the globe in real time was as fantastical as a moon landing. This was the reality of the early internet in the 1990s when the web was just streams of green letters on a black screen housed in a box-like device and accessing it meant monopolising the home phone line. To a young teenager, this new technology seemed more of a novelty than a necessity, overshadowing the possibility of missed phone calls with its nascent potential. The Internet's early days were marked by a mixture of awe and scepticism. Parents marvelled at its ability to instantly fetch weather updates from Beijing or download Socrates' apology, while their children were less impressed. It was a period where the Internet felt more like a topic of conversation, its potential and mechanics, rather than a practical tool. However, this perception began to shift with the discovery of online forums. Take the CompuServe Teen Forum, a digital space where anonymity erased real-life insecurities and judgments. Here, you didn't have to be the awkward, late-to-puberty kid ridiculed at school. Instead, you were just another user, sharing experiences and anxieties and finding solace in knowing others felt the same. Forums like this could become a creative playground for a teen and his peers. Without images, some turned to making art through the use of digital characters like letters, numbers, symbols and so forth, known as ASCII, to draw everything from simple smiley faces to intricate designs. These were the early days of memes a concept that didn't have a name then, but which formed a significant part of the shared digital culture. But this idyllic digital world wasn't without its shadows. Even in its infancy, the internet was riddled with racism, misogyny and the allure of conspiracy theories, mirroring the complexities happening offline. Decades later, the internet has had a monumental impact on our lives. It's a mixed bag of deep connections creative exploration and troubling encounters. Living through this digital revolution, it's difficult to fully grasp the Internet's historical significance. Perhaps it's best to approach it with curiosity and caution, respecting its dual nature as a tool for both connection and discord. Unravelling Lives The Ethics of Googling Strangers in the digital age, the ability to glean intricate details about someone's life with a few keystrokes is a unique skill. This practice involves delving into the lives of people, often those who are barely known, through the vast database of Google. This talent is particularly useful in social situations like parties, where one can arm themselves with detailed knowledge about other attendees. This ability to access personal information online creates an odd sense of intimacy with complete strangers, often leading to interactions that are informed, yet potentially invasive. Carrying out this behaviour, of course, has ethical implications. It highlights a significant invasion of privacy, as sensitive details are easily accessible on platforms controlled by large corporations like Google. The irony of this situation is profound. The public nature of our lives on social media platforms can make personal security questions easily answerable. This overlapping of our public and private spheres raises important questions about how much control we really have over our personal information. The author John Green experienced a poignant example of the impact of Googling a stranger while he was working as a student chaplain in a children's hospital. Here, the situation of a severely burned child left a lasting impression on him. The trauma and emotional turmoil he witnessed were overwhelming, and the memory of the child's suffering lingered for years. Years later, Green fought an internal conflict over whether or not he should search for the child's fate online. It was a battle between the desire to know and the fear of what he might find. When he finally made the decision to search, the discovery that the child had survived and was living a normal, happy life was a huge relief. Green's experience highlights the paradoxical nature of the digital age. The ability to access knowledge can be both a burden and a blessing.
It also underscores the complex relationship we have with technology, where the lines between public and private are increasingly blurred. So the practice of Googling strangers is a double-edged sword. While it brings the ability to connect with others and provide closure, it raises ethical questions about privacy too. The dual nature of this modern-day practice means balancing its ability to uncover heartwarming truths against the cost of personal privacy invasion. Cooling down, warming up. The paradox of air conditioning. If you've ever breathed a deep sigh of relief as you stepped into a cooled room after a scorching walk outside in the hot sun, you'll be familiar with the marvel that is air conditioning. But have you ever considered its profound influence, for better and for worse, on modern life? From transforming scorching deserts into bustling metropolises to enabling the storage of life-saving medications, air conditioning, or AC, has reshaped human existence in astounding ways. The trend of Americans migrating toward warmer states such as Nevada, Florida and Arizona has been largely facilitated by the advent of air conditioning. Take Phoenix, Arizona, for example. Its population exploded from a mere 5,544 in 1900 to about 1.7 million in 2021, despite its blistering summer heat. This desert city also hosts an ice hockey team, which further emphasises the transformative power of air conditioning. It was an engineer named Willis Carrier who invented air conditioning in 1902 as a response to humidity issues in a New York printing company. His invention not only managed humidity, but introduced the unexpected benefit of cooling indoor spaces. This effect that so many of us take for granted completely revolutionised architectural designs and living conditions. But this widespread creature comfort of ours comes with a grave cost. Air conditioning relies heavily on fossil fuels, contributing significantly to global warming. In fact, combined with electric fans, it's estimated to account for around 10% of global electricity usage. This vicious cycle of cooling our indoors while heating the planet highlights a peculiar and rather sinister aspect of the Anthropocene where human comfort and convenience can lead to dire environmental consequences. This is even more troubling when you consider that wealthy people benefit the most from using air conditioning, while impoverished communities are more likely to suffer its negative environmental effects. Health impacts are also significant. Heat waves prove fatal to many people each year, particularly in regions unaccustomed to high temperatures and where air conditioning is less prevalent. In hot climates like Phoenix, indoor cooling has become almost a necessity for survival. Moving forward, it's crucial to recognise that our custom indoor weather is intrinsically linked to the climate outdoors. The comfort provided by air conditioning is a luxury that takes a heavy toll on our everyday lives. We must rethink and redefine our approach to climate control, balancing our needs with environmental sustainability. In the Anthropocene, air conditioning symbolises both human ingenuity and our intricate connection with and impact on the natural world. Thank you.